Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And today's episode is all about varnishing. Now, two weeks ago, we already went over all of the varnishing stuff for oil painting, specifically because it is very, very different from the stuff that I'm about to talk to you about, which is acrylic paintings and, well, other media, to be exact. So uh, before I jump into all of that, though, quick reminder, Art of the Carolinas is happening this year. So excited. So if you are not familiar with what Art of the Carolinas is, it is a huge trade show where we actually in Raleigh uh, at the Hilton, which specific Hilton is Hilton, it? Hilton North Raleigh Midtown. Hilton North Raleigh Midtown. I always, it's a mouthful. Thank you, Katie. Uh, <laughs> we make the ballroom of that Hilton into a gigantic trade show. So you get massive discounts. Uh, you actually get to play with the art supplies on hand, like in person, before you even have to buy them. And you get all the different demos, and we have workshops that will be happening as well. Uh, the trade show will be running November 12th through the 14th, and the workshops will actually begin that Thursday before on the 11th. So if you are interested, make sure to check it out now because it is always sold out with the workshops. Uh, if you are not in our area as well and you want to fly in and maybe kind of make a weekend of it, make sure you check out the hotel rooms as well right now because again, everything books up so quickly and I would love to see you guys there. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna teach classes. I have two classes right now, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, Frida will be there, I don't know, I know Katie will be there. Amanda might, might be, she's, maybe. We'll guilt her into it, don't worry. <laughs> but we'll, the whole Jerry's live crew is gonna be there so I'll be bopping around doing demonstrations and teaching classes, and I hope to see you guys there. So, today's show. If you are interested in any of the materials that I go over, and there is quite a lot, so much so that it's actually going off the table over here. Uh, <laughs> if you're interested in anything that I'm showing you today, make sure to go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and in the search bar, type in today's class code, which is JL205. And so that will bring up the entire teacher's cart, which goes over all the different things, including the brushes and all the supplies that I'm gonna be going over. So let's jump into varnishing. I know there's gonna be a lot that we're gonna to have to go over. So hopefully you guys brought your questions because there's gonna be a whole lot of things. Um, now, unlike oil painting varnishing, when you are varnishing acrylics and other media, most of the time you want what is considered an isolation coat. Um, now what that means is that when you have your acrylic painting, you want a barrier in between your painting and the varnish layer, the final varnish layer that sits on top of that. The reason why is because if there is ever any kind of like damage, like whether or not you have, you know, smoke damage or somebody, you know, maybe you sell a painting to somebody who actually smokes inside their house still, which is, you know, it, it will damage your artwork. If you wanna ever remove that varnish and then get back to the beautiful artwork and the discoloration and all that stuff, take it off of there, you're gonna to need to be having some kind of a removable varnish. Uh, but if you don't have that isolation coat, there's a higher chance that you have, uh, that the solvent will start interacting with your acrylic paints and then lift your painting right back up as you're removing the varnish. So uh, I kinda of have different sections here on the table, even though it probably won't look it doesn't really look like it. Um, these right here are what is, I would consider my isolation coats. You can also kind of start to include these things over here. <laughs> uh, and I will go over each and every one uh, just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, but let's start with uh, the one that I was introduced to uh, as a, a college student. Uh, this was the very first isolation coat that I was ever taught. Soft gel gloss. Now this alone, straight out of the jar, is not ready for an isolation coat. Um, and let me, is this it? Yes, this is it. So right here, you can actually see, uh, and just this is gonna be consistent through all of my panels that I go through and showing you the different swatches. Uh, I painted the whole thing with acrylic, uh, the, you know, one, one coat of the purple with the, the lighter purple on top. Uh, this side right here is completely raw. This is just acrylic. This is the coat, so you can see with the actual gloss gel on it and then the raw acrylic, so you understand kind of what it would do to your painting. Um, so this soft gel gloss, when you are 
using it as an isolation coat, you do, I believe, want to do a two to one ratio where you water this down. Um, now, it should also be, I believe the directions are on the back. If not, uh, Golden actually has an incredible website where they have all the formulas for all the different uh, ratios of things to mix in, which is awesome. Uh, and they have the instructions on their website as well. So if you ever want to use that as kind of a reference point, it's really good to have. Uh, but this is how I usually make my soft gel gloss isolation coat. So what I did is I took a pellet knife, scooped a blob in there, and then I put some water in there. I usually like to swirl it a little bit just to kind of introduce the water to the gel because the gel is a lot thicker than water. Uh, and then it kind of starts to break it down and then I really make sure to mix it in. Now, the more you mix it, the more you're gonna introduce air bubbles into it. So kind of be a little aware of that. If you want to, you can just shake the ever living bejesus out of it and then sit it down, let it rest and kind of get all those bubbles back to the surface and popped. So uh, if you, you can actually see all the bubbles that are on the, in the jar. Uh, now I do believe we have a question real quick. What ratio of soft gel to water do you use? I believe it's a two to one ratio. So two parts soft gel, one part water. Yes, two parts soft gel, one part water. Now you can adjust that ratio to your own specific liking. If you want the isolation coat to be a little bit thicker, you can actually do that. Um, and I do know uh, the golden uh, website does have the instructions on mixing this in case you ever forget and you need to go back to reference it. Uh, but if it's not perfect ratios, it's not going to mess up your surface. Cause like I eyeballed this and it's not a perfect two to one ratio and it still does the job. Uh, the one thing is that you don't want to make it like mostly water more, more. You want more gel than water really. So this is how I usually store it. So if I do make my, uh, my isolation coat with a soft gel. I usually make a whole jar of it. And once I'm done, I close it, put it on my shelf, use it the next time. So it will stay wet in here for quite a long time, which is nice. Now, the really cool thing about Golden is that they understood that mixing that is kind of a pain. So they just came up with an isolation coat, which is essentially the same thing, only it's already ready to go. You don't have to mix anything. It is ready to rock and roll. Um, so let me actually take, this is the panel with the, here, let's go over to the overhead so you guys can really see. So this is the, one of these is the isolation coat and one is the soft gel gloss. And you can see there's again, the raw panel and this is the, the coating that I did here. Uh, you can't really tell a difference. They're both glossy. Um, I can tell you right now, this is the soft gel gloss. This is the isolation coat because I have them <laughs> labeled on the back. <laughs> so they are pretty much identical when it comes to application and what it does to your painting. Uh, the, the glossiness of it really does uh, make your colors look much richer, which is fantastic. Now, this is an isolation coat. This is just the barrier in between your painting and the final varnish layer. If you don't want glossy finish on your final varnish layer, you don't have to have a glossy finish. This is the best way to seal your painting without putting any kind of a haze on your acrylic painting because that gloss uh, gel will make all your colors just pop uh, or the isolation coat, whichever one you use. They make your colors look beautiful and they give it that nice uh, sealed finish and then you can adjust the sheen to either satin or matte or even keep it glossy. Or if you wanna make it super glossy, there's a high gloss option, which is also available. Uh, but I'll show you that in a minute. So this is just an isolation coat, right? So yeah, if you, if you guys don't wanna to have to mix the whole ratio thing or worry about what, it, what you need to do, just grab a jar of isolation coat. This is really awesome. Now. There are these two bottles here, um, which is a little different because this has to do with not acrylic paintings. So like I said, uh, the, the description of the show is not just uh, varnishing for acrylic paintings, it's other media. So I wanted to make sure to touch base on 
varnishing a watercolor. Um, and actually, do you want to go back to the, the main? Because I'm probably good with the, the overhead. So uh, this watercolor I did for the hair show. I was going over how to actually uh, paint hair, and you guys can watch that back. Uh, I know it's on our either YouTube channel or the Facebook uh, live uh, videos. This is a watercolor that I did on just, I can't remember what paper, uh, but it's just a, uh, I believe it's cold press paper, uh, just standard watercolor paper. And I believe this was actually gouache and watercolor, so it was a combination. Um, I didn't do anything weird with my watercolors. This would have been a pain in the, the butt to brush on any kind of varnish. You ne Whenever you're sealing a watercolor, you never want to brush it on. You are going to move your pigments around. Because it's the nature of watercolor, it's going to shift your pigments around because they are watercolor. They will react to anything wet. So uh, that's what I did with these two. This is again on the Golden website, uh, which is really, really awesome. Because I wanted to test this out because I wanted to do you guys a service to make sure that I, I tested to see if this would work. Um, and I did actually seal this. Uh, so it was four parts of GAC 500 to one part of airbrush medium. So a four to one ratio, mostly GAC 500. Uh, this one I did actually measure just because I've never done this before. And I wanted to make sure that I really sealed it in there. Uh, now, because not everybody wants to frame their watercolors under glass. Sometimes they want it to be, you know, open like a normal canvas would. Or... If you are also painting, we have the Raffiné, or I'm sorry, the ref Reflections, uh, I said Raffiné, Raffiné is our pencils, guys. Uh, reflections has these watercolor postcards, which, you know, we figured out that you guys can actually send them in the mail with a crystal seal bag, but maybe you don't want to put these in a bag. Maybe you want to just seal them and then mail them like they normally would, and then that would actually work and protect your artwork and... It also has that UV protection, so your artwork is not going to fade. Beautiful. Uh, the other reason why you might actually want to seal your watercolors is because maybe it's not paper. Maybe, just maybe, it's inside of an egg. <laughs> so, um, and let's go to the, the side camera here so you guys can really see this. Um, I decided to be a little extra. <laughs> I did a watercolor of a chicken inside of my eggshell because uh, this was breakfast a couple days ago. So I, what I did, because I know you guys are going to ask, I ended up, of course I ate, ate the egg because it was delicious. Uh, I cleaned everything out of the inside of the eggshell, which included the membrane, and then to prep it to watercolor. And so I sealed the egg with the Daniel Smith watercolor ground and I wanted to use the uh, titanium white so that way it still had that nice crisp whiteness inside the egg but it also gave me a really nice surface to watercolor on and then I just yeah used the Lucas 1862 watercolors and then a couple of the um, technical water uh, waterproof accurate pens uh, just to kind of give a little bit of detail uh, but this is something that I would want to have that UV protection, so I don't want to just leave it exposed like it is. You know, I probably want to seal the outside as well as the inside. Uh, so uh, let's go back to the, the front camera here. What I would do is either mix up that ratio uh, for my GAC 500 and the airbrush medium, uh, or you also have the option of spray varnish. Uh, this, uh, I, again, you want to make sure you use the gloss. Uh, the gloss archival varnish uh, from Golden is great. The, we have other options as well. But um, this will seal your uh, watercolor in and give you that isolation coat. Uh, so will this, and you want to be able to spray it, right? So this right here becomes very, very fluid. And to seal this painting, I actually ended up using the Aquamist bottle. <laughs> Uh, now, again, I did this specifically just to make sure that I could test this and give you guys reviews. So, um, the cool thing with this is because the Aquamist gives you such a fine spray, 
I probably went a little bit more heavy handed than I was expecting just because this comes out so much faster than an actual aerosol can. Uh, but it's a non aerosol option, which is really, really cool. You still want to do it outside because you will make a mess. Um, I actually ended up doing it anytime I spray varnish with an aerosol can or uh, something like this. I put it inside just a throwaway box. And then uh, like if you, <laughs> if you guys order art supplies from us, this is the box that they come in. <laughs> usually uh, but I put the ratios in here I actually have my marks here when I did the measurements still on the side of the bottle and then I just sprayed this and then once I was officially done with the I think that I did four coats on this watercolor uh, I actually took this uh, dumped out the rest of my mix which if I wanted to save it I could put it again in a little mason jar or a little um, like a like a little Tupperware or something uh, to save for later and then I cleaned this out so this right here still sprays water I was double checking to see if that would gunk it up or if it would clog the nozzle and it sprayed fine when I did this it also sprayed fine this morning which I was very very surprised to be completely honest just because it gives you such a fine mist I was like I knew it was gonna I knew it was gonna clog but it didn't and I was very pleasantly surprised so I can still use this over and over again and seal some more watercolors. So, uh, with that though, um, do you wanna, um, let's maybe go to the overhead. You might be able to see this because I wanted to really show off that texture. So, I don't know if you can, can you guys see that? Let's maybe try the, the side, side camera because I really wanna make sure that you guys can see this. Uh, it does have, there we go. Uh, it does have a, that glossy sheen to it because again, you want to make sure that it's not only sealing your artwork in, but it also does not give any kind of a weird haze to your um, your pigments here. So if you had sprayed this with like a matte, uh, you know, a gloss varnish like uh, or the I'm sorry, the aerosol varnish like this, but if it was matte, you run the risk of actually putting a weird haze that would kind of almost make this look chalky. You definitely want to seal it down with something that's gloss, but the the spray with the the GAC 500 and the airbrush medium almost amplified the texture of this paper. It was so cool how that did that. So like it's very tactile, and everything's sealed in. So like this will not come off at all, even if I get it wet. So I'm going to then take this. I mean, probably go to the the front camera here. Uh, I'm going to take this. And then I'm going to actually seal it with a removable varnish. That way, if I want to frame this without any kind of glass, not only is it UV protected, but it's also going to be okay. Like I can remove the old varnish, get back down to this isolation coat, and then varnish it again if I need to in 10 years. So that's sealing watercolor. Um, but that's, again, these are my isolation coats. So I wanted to make sure to go over that with you guys. And let me make sure I don't break my chicken. Chicken. We have questions? Yeah, we had a couple of questions about how you would go about working on alcohol inks, like what you would recommend for alcohol inks. Alcohol inks are a very similar to watercolors. Um, you have to be kind of careful, again, not to move your pigments around, especially if you have it on, say, something that's not very absorbent, like Yupo paper. Yupo paper is notoriously, like, it's slick, it's your pigments are going to move around on you. Um, if your alcohol ink is on more of like a, a watercolor paper, it's going to absorb more so. Uh, and it probably wouldn't shift on you as much as like Yupo paper. But let's assume you're on a very slick paper that your pigments can move around on. Um, again, I would say you want to do an isolation coat with something that is a spray. So I would say some kind of an archival varnish spray that is gloss. That way you can coat it. Uh, you always want to do really thin layers too, so it shouldn't move your pigments around. Always test a little throwaway piece though, uh, just to make sure that if it does react, because this one might, be, might react to alcohol inks, but this one might not. It's one of those things that you, you definitely want to test it out. Have another question? Also similar to that, using water-based 
block printing for mixed media, how would you want to seal that? Because I imagine you would also have to seal the back so that it doesn't, moisture doesn't seep in from behind. Um, that's the thing is that you don't necessarily have to seal the back um, because that you're just now sandwiching your artwork in. Um, like I'm not gonna seal the back of my watercolor. Uh, if you're really worried about the moisture, like if you're in somewhere that's very, very humid, like Florida maybe, or the tropics, uh, <laughs> you you might want to seal the back of your, your work, but think of it like anything that is water soluble even after it dries. So wash, watercolor, water block printing ink that will reactivate if you get it wet again. Anything that is reactivating once it's cured, you want to use a spray varnish every time to at least do that first isolation coat. And when I say the first isolation coat, with the spray varnishes, you need to do at least four to six coats just to seal it in. I hope that answers that question. Any more questions before I jump into the next? <laughs> I've got a few actually. Okay. Um, what do you think of polycrylic as a varnish? Polycrylic. Um, is there a specific like brand or like, is it? I believe it's typically used to coat wood. Um, like it's something you oh, can buy so like seal. Oh, like seal. Oh, oh. Um, I'm always very hesitant to say anything from a hardware store you should use to seal your artwork because it's not made for art. I know that sounds like I'm just trying to like sell you something that's a little bit fancier and a little bit more pricey. The reason why is because the 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 varnishes and stuff like that at a hardware store are meant for wood or. Uh, sealing a piece of furniture that if it does yellow over time, you're fine. None of those have that, uh, I guess, kind of non-yellowing UV coating that will protect your artwork and keep it from fading over time. Also, might be really difficult to remove. Like, really difficult to remove. Um, I, I would just be really hesitant to say do that. I, I would just suggest you don't for the most part. Uh, is there another question to that? I feel like is there was another Gek one. Is 500 a polymer? And if so, is a plastic bag a good idea or necessary? Uh, a plastic bag. Uh, I think like the crystal seal bags, for example. Oh, okay. So I believe Gag 500 is a gloss extender. Um, so I believe it's essentially a very high flow clear acrylic more or less um but it's probably less porous than that because it does seal it um i'm not 100 percent sure just because i've again i've been jumping from all these different varnishes so like i'm trying to re retain all the information between this one versus this one versus this one <laughs> and it's hard to keep all that information straight in my head um, I can't remember exactly what GAC 500 is physically comprised of, um, but I would say it's probably similar to, um, cause I believe it does have it, that UV protection as well. Cause acrylic, um, acrylic is slightly porous on a microscopic level. I believe this is not, um, but this is just an option of being able to seal your watercolors, whereas like the, the crystal seal bags is the option of not having to seal your watercolors in case you want to like mail it out. Because we did test that, uh, that you can put a stamp on it and ship, ship it through the mail. Um, but I can't off the top of my head remember exactly what this is. Sorry. Should be available on Golden's website, our website I believe as well. I'm looking right now to see if I can find it. <laughs> and again, I had never sealed watercolor with any of that. I usually just used uh, the spray varnish. So that was the first time I've ever used that as a, like a sealant. I, honestly, first time I've ever actually used GAC 500 because I never actually needed to use that as an extender for, <laughs> for my acrylics. I use other things uh, to kind of uh, aid in the flow of my acrylics, but that I've never actually used before. Testing these things for you guys. What about using...
using Spectrafix. Spectrafix. As an initial spray. Spectra. I'm trying to remember what Spectrafix. Isn't that like a, just a spray varnish? I a, so. Like a different brand. Um, if I remember correctly, it is a workable fixative. Um, if it's a workable fixative, you know, because it's not actually sealing. It's, again, one of those things where across the board brand is not really my main focus as far as uh, one versus the other. Because I'm not going to tell talk to you about this one versus this one and why this one's better or this one's better. Um, it's, it's all personal preference on as to which brand you use as far as if you want to use spray varnish. Um, when it comes to workable fixative, that is something that you want to mainly use for your drawing materials just because it's meant to kind of stick your, your graphite or your charcoal or your pastels kind of down, but it does not seal them to where you can actually go back in and work back into it. That's why it's called workable fixative because then you can actually go back in and manipulate it because it's very thin layer. Uh, it doesn't seal anything though. So, if it is a workable fixative, no. If it is not, and if it's just a it different brand. It doesn't specify, it just says it's a pastel fixative. Okay, pastel fixatives, that's the one other thing. Um, pastel fixatives are a different type of unicorn. And, I mean, I have one here that I am familiar with, um, which is specifically for oil pastels. Uh, I didn't want to get into drawing materials because that is very different from paintings. This is more of a varnishing for paintings kind of a show. Um, if we need to do a show on varnishing for drawings, put it in the comments, because I go over all your comments, and if you guys are interested, I will add that show, absolutely. Um, I just didn't want to jump into that because that's, again, a whole different thing. Like, I separated the oil paints from all of this just because that's different, because I don't want to confuse you. <laughs> Um, but let's jump over here though to the other things that I said that you could actually use as almost like an isolation coat. Uh, the reason why is because these varnishes are not removable. Um, they are one of those things where if you put them on, it's there for good. You are not going to be able to remove them with any kind of a solvent, whereas the ones on this side, you absolutely can. So you can use these as a final varnish or a, sorry, <laughs> my jars are shifting over there, like we have a ghost. Um, okay, uh, you can use these as a final varnish if you are not interested in doing a, uh, like a isolation coat, because you're not required to do an isolation coat. It's just nice to have that um, in between if you ever, further on down the, the road, want to be able to remove your varnish and put it back on for the longevity purposes. If you don't care and you just want to varnish it and be done with it and go on with your day, um, these are a good option. Or you can use some isolation. Again, if you use an isolation coat, make sure to stick with the gloss just so your colors are kind of enhanced as opposed to dulled down with a mattifying agent. Um, so I have the Creative Inspirations. Um, this is not only a varnish, but it's also a painting medium. So you can kind of use these in your paintings uh, to extend your colors and kind of give a little bit more transparency, but you can use them as a varnishing. Um, so if we go to the overhead view, let me actually get my brushes out of the way. So I have a big stack of brushes. All right, so I have, we have two options here. We have the mat and then we have the gloss. As you can see, matte is very matte, gloss is very gloss. Um, the difference between them is that that gloss is going to deepen your colors, and this one is really going to give you that matte sheen. Uh, the reason why some people, like, if I were to coat this whole thing with this mattifying agent, uh, the matte varnish, you wouldn't realize that it's kind of hazy. You only realize it once it's kind of in conjunction with the rest of it that's open and still unvarnished. Um, the main reason why you might go for this rather than this is because if that sheen 
bothers you, then that might be something that you want to avoid. Um, for me as an artist, this drives me crazy. <laughs> That's my own personal preference. Um, if you can live with that, that sheen, because if you're in a gallery and your artwork is beautifully lit and that sheen isn't even a, a thing, you're fine. If I walk past it and all I can see is that glare, there it is. If that's what I see, I, I can't see your artwork. And that's the part that drives me crazy, which is why I usually stick in between these two. I go with a satin. But for these two specific brand, or this specific brand, they have the matte and then they have the gloss. Now you absolutely can mix them together and get kind of an in-between if you want. And these, I think, are the, probably the most affordable out of all the options. These are, these are fantastic. And, you know, you can also use it as a medium. So, that's the creative inspirations. And then um, I do have Liquitex as well as the non-removable. Uh, there is actually one more that I couldn't get my hands on, uh, which is also matte. So, um, you'll see here the differences between them. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's going to look more matte. Um, I just didn't get it in time. So, satin, gloss, and then high gloss. Okay. So... Here are the three different ones. There's high gloss, there's gloss, and then there's satin. Which, again, all of them beautifully like deepen your colors, make them look really rich, but it's that sheen that's the difference. And so I'm, I'm okay with that. These two drive me nuts. But that's my own personal preference. If you like that super high glossy, that's fantastic. Go for it. If it makes you happy, do it. Um, or you could even maybe start playing around with the high gloss versus a matte and then start uh, having maybe this stripe is just in matte, whereas like these are in high gloss. And then not only is your, your piece sealed, but it now has a little bit more of an interest, which is really fun. Uh, that would just take some tape, more or less, or a brush and a lot of patience. Um, so that's the Liquitex. And again, these are the ones that are not removable. Um, now, I'm going to wait on the oil pastel fixative. We're going to go over that at the end, just because it's a little different. Uh, the ones over here are the removable options. Um, and actually, let me start with uh, the golden. Again, there is one more that is the gloss that I did not get my hands on in time <laughs> for the show. But as I'm sure you guys will know, it's, it's the same thing, again, just gloss. Um, so these... Let me make sure I got the right side. Yeah. All right. You can see here. I have the matte and the satin, right? So, again, this is just the raw acrylic. And then these are the ones that I sealed. Now, with these, they do tell you that not only do you need an isolation coat, um, the rest of these actually all have isolation coats. So, I did isolation coats underneath this final varnish which was the, uh, the gloss isolation coat. So it actually started off just like this. So it was super glossy, but once I put the satin and the matte on there, it knocks that gloss back down, but it also gives me the sheen that I'm looking for. You know, really pretty. And there is no haze to either of these. There's no like funky mattifying agent that reacts to it and makes it look almost chalky. Um, now the other thing with these, and with any varnish that you guys use, make sure you read the instructions on the back. Um, specifically with these, I, again, I was jumping between all the different varnish, just trying to make sure that I could get it done in time. Um, these, you're supposed to water down. Uh, I believe the ratio is a two to one. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. It's a four to one. It's lit, written right there in case you don't remember. It's okay. But when I was doing these, I totally forgot, and I went in with the satin, I just went straight in <laughs> with the brush, and I didn't water it down at all. I was really worried that it was going to look super hazy, um, but even with that little bit of a mistake, because I, I do very, very light coats, I still got away with it. So uh, just to make sure you read your instructions and follow them, I just, I was jumping around a lot. So please excuse that. 
Um, all right, so the next one is going to get into, actually, let me do the, the Gamvar, because uh, these you probably will recognize from, oh, that's also still wet and sticky and on my hands now. Sorry. I must have had a drip down the side of the bottle because it's now on me. Uh, these you should probably recognize from the last show, the last varnishing show. Uh, these are the ones that you can actually use on oil paints. I believe you can also use them on watercolor if you spray it. Uh, usually it says can be used on oil, alkyd, and acrylic paint, so not watercolors um, specifically. I was thinking watercolor, but it was actually the alkyds. So um, once your oil painting is touch dry and even with your fingernail, you can kind of push into it and if it kind of dents in and bounces right back, you're ready to be able to use this on your oil paintings, which I went over on the last one. But you can also use these on your oil acrylics. Uh, so these are the different sheens. We have the gloss, the satin, and the matte. And you can see the different sheens there. Um, again, with all of these, I did at least two coats, depending on the instructions of the bottle. Um, but for the most part, two coats was plenty for each one of these. And you can see all the lovely, lovely finishes there. Um, but these uh, are cleaning, you have to clean up with, um, what's it called, Gamsol. This is the, the one that you have to use a solvent in order to actually clean up your brushes and your mess. So that is the one caveat with that. Um, but we'll start getting into kind of the uh, spray varnishes. So as with any spray varnish, you usually want to take this outside because of ventilation. Um, I usually use a box to put my piece in, uh, or I can also uh, kind of cut this open and lay it flat. The reason why I do that is not only to kind of protect whatever it is that I'm spraying this on from getting varnish all over it because that will get sticky and then you'll have a whole thing, especially if you're renting. It's not fun. <laughs> Don't spray varnish directly onto concrete because there will be a visible difference and it's not good for renters at all. Um, but this will not only protect the, the surface of whatever is below your artwork, but it also keeps dirt and debris from flying into your, your work. Um, so it kind of keeps it protected. Uh, but with uh, the spray varnishes, they are all exactly the same in the sense that you need to do at least four to six coats. Again, just read the instructions on each little uh, bottle. Uh, you do need to shake it like maracas, dance around with it for a little while. Uh, make sure once you're done shaking it, you shake it some more. Uh, shake, your, shake your booty. Don't be moody. Uh, but <laughs> you definitely want to make sure you shake, 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 shake. Um, especially the ones that are matte finish. That mattifying agent does have a tendency to settle at the bottom. And you hear that little rattle? When I first picked this up, it was not rattling because it was stuck at the bottom of the bottle with all of the mattifying agents and you have to just shake it and shake it and shake it. And then finally about two minutes into shaking it, that little, um, whatever the, it's like, I think it's probably a little aluminum ball that's rattling in there. Uh, that finally got free and then I shook it for another two minutes uh, just to make sure that it was really incorporated. Um, now, I, I believe it also tells you once you're done finishing, uh, shaking it, and then spraying, uh, if you need to use it again, shake it for another ever so long. Uh, but that's with any of the spray varnishes, uh, unless you're using the GAC 500 and the airbrush medium, because that is not aerosol, but that specifically was mixed up in my bottle, so I made sure that, that was nice, nice and incorporated. Um, once you do that and you have it in your box and you're ready to spray, make sure you uh, spray it uh, a good distance away. I, I usually go for about a foot, uh, but you want to make sure that when you do spray, start off your panel, go completely across it, and then go all the way over to the other side and completely off your panel. And you can actually start it, stop it, and then just do it that way, kind of almost very mechanically like a robot. Uh, but that way it'll get you a super even 
a very light coating that will not pool or puddle or give you very funky kind of finishes. Again, any of these that I'm about to show you also, again, still have that isolation coat that I brushed on. So uh, this is all on top of an isolation coat because uh, the instructions said that you needed to seal it. So I did that. Um, all right, so this is the Lasco. Uh, again, they also do have, I believe, one in between the gloss and the matte that I, oh, what is it called? It's either like a semi-gloss or a semi, satin something it's it's an odd one it's not quite semi-gloss but it's um there's a term for it uh i can't remember but i couldn't get my hands on it sorry uh but i would imagine it's in between these two so there is the the two different sheens all the glosses are pretty much very very similar i can also compare them later on when i have all my panels over here but again the, the matte is also very super matte but it is sealed, it is UV protected. You can't even tell really the difference between each side. If I didn't have that line from the tape, you really probably wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, but that's the Lasco. Uh, they are super easy to use as long as you're outside with ventilation. Now, Golden has quite a few options. Um, we have the matte, and I think they're all kind of sticking to each other. Uh, here we go. Here's the matte. Here's the semi-gloss. Here is the satin and the gloss. So as you can see, it kind of goes from a very, very matte all the way over and has all the different options for whatever you are looking for, which is really nice. Uh, again, it is on top of an isolation coat, so they all started off very, very glossy. But um, if you're like me, this one's my favorite because it's just got a little bit of sheen but it's really beautiful can the gloss spray varnish be used as an isolation coat um that i was actually wondering when i was doing these i was like why didn't i just do this uh but i believe let me just double check here application do 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 um nope here it is okay what down here where it has the um the instructions it says for acrylic paints apply an isolation coat <laughs> so they actually say not to use this as an isolation coat um so i would say no just because golden has tested uh, their their materials very extensively and they are really good about telling you sorry uh, whether or not it's going to work as an isolation coat I would imagine uh, this especially because it's removable with a, a solvent your isolation coat should not be removable that way if you ever need to remove the varnish you can remove it down to that isolation coat and then your solvents go no further because they just don't interact um, but if you were to use this as an isolation coat and then add a varnish to maybe make the, the sheen a semi-gloss, if I need to remove the semi-gloss sheen and, because it now has like a nicotine smoker's like weird yellow haze to it because it was sitting in my grandfather's apartment and he was notorious for smoking inside. It's so gross, but everything got nicotine stained. And so if I needed to remove that varnish, I would then remove it all the way down to my uh, painting because I had no isolation coat. So. I looked up the last go cans. Mm -hmm. The odd one you mentioned. The odd one. A semi matte. Semi matte. I knew it wasn't semi gloss. <laughs> it's it again. I had a lot of varnish that I was jumping in between, so it was hard to kind of keep them all straight in my head. Uh, but we are on the last one before I wanted to officially, what are we, how are we doing on time, by the way? About 15 minutes. Okay. So I can go over a quick, um, kind of how to varnish type of a deal. Um, but I wanted to show you these guys as well. Um, especially because this is the Liquitex. Let me make sure this is kind of on camera here. Uh, this is the Liquitex that is removable. So they had the ones, oops, excuse me, that are not removable. This is just the, the professional varnish. 
that comes in all the different, you know, sheens. Uh, this is the Soluvar, which is also, uh, I believe you can also use this on an oil painting as well. Again, but this one you do, unlike the, the Gamvar where you can make sure that it's touch dry, this one, when you use it on an oil painting, it does have to be fully cured. So six months to two years, like I said in the last varnishing thing. Um, but you can actually use this on an oil painting too. Uh, these are the two uh, panels. Uh, the, the weird right in the middle is the raw acrylic. And as you can see, I have the gloss and the matte. One is spray, one is brush. Can you tell which one is which? Uh, you might with a, you might with the, the glossy. Um, oh wait, no, I was wrong. I was thinking this was my brush because uh, I was like, oh, maybe I can see a little bit of texture. No, this is the brushed one. So the top is the brush application. The bottom is the spray. Uh, if you use it in very thin layers, you should not be able to see brush marks, but it should give you a very consistent. Um, sheen between whichever one you use. So that is the Solubar. Again, uh, this also does need to be cleaned up with a solvent. I believe mineral spirits. That's the one that you have to use to remove that. All right, so let's do a quick application of some some uh, varnish real quick. Now, uh, one thing I didn't actually go over were brushes. Yes. Oh, we have all the questions. Oh, wait, no. Okay. I you guys, brushes. <laughs> you, you, I wanted you to talk about brushes. Uh, brushes, okay. They're about to yell at me for not talking about brushes. All right, so I did have two options here um, as far as the different brushes that I would use on my personal acrylics uh, that I would use as varnish brushes. Make sure you get a varnish brush that is nice and soft. Uh, this is the Colossus, which again, I also have on the oil painting because you can use these for the acrylics or you can use these for oil um, but it's, it's a synthetic bristle that it's like, it's so soft and it's, it's like a little fluffy cloud. Um, that's what you want in a varnish brush, something that has a nice snap to it. So if you need to move your, your solvents around, uh, or I'm sorry, your, your varnishes around, you can, but it's so soft that it's not going to leave a bunch of bristle marks. Um, these right here are the Berlin Mottlers. Yeah, it's Mottler. I always forget that there's an L and I got it right this time. Uh, these have a good snap to them, but um, they're a little bit snappier than the Colossus. And they do come in all of these different sizes, which is fantastic. So if I have a really small uh, painting, I can use, you know, the, the one inch, which I also wanted to show you this. Uh, you see how I have pink pigment in there? It's because this was used for some kind of art painting thing. I will not use this. For varnishing now. You want to make sure that your varnish brushes are varnish brushes. They are not used for actual painting uh, because if you have any kind of pigment left in there, even if it's dry or it's acrylic and it's just kind of stuck in there, you want to make sure that nothing is going to actually transfer from your brush through the varnish onto your painting because then it's just stuck in, which is not good. So this one I would not actually use. Um, but I'm going to be using the satin polymer varnish uh, because satin is my favorite and I did not want to use a spray because we are inside and I don't want to harm anyone without ventilation. I mean, we're in a big open studio, so it wouldn't be awful, but still out outside. Take the spray outside. Um, so I'll give you guys options here. I have, might have to back it on up a little bit. <laughs> I have a portrait and then I have the um, painting that I did on one of the very first shows that I did. So this is three-dimensional. It has a lot of texture to it. Both of these have an isolation coat on them already. That's why they're kind of glossy. Um, which one would you like me to, to varnish? I'll give you guys a minute. While we wait for the answers. Yes. Them. Questions um, while we wait. Batia wants to know if you can mix uh, brands when it comes to isolation versus final varnish? Yes, you can. Um, like I said, I use the golden isolation coat on all of those panels. And then I did spray varnishes with like the Liquitex. I did the, the brush Soluvar. I did um, the Lasco. 
all of those had golden isolation coat underneath just because I was trying to make sure that I was done in time for this show and I didn't want to have to sit there and mix the soft gel gloss or have to use any of the other ones and then try to make sure that I dried in time. Like I'm very familiar with the isolation coat from Golden so I knew how well I could time it and make sure that I got everything done <laughs> for today's show. Any other questions, Paul? What do you use to measure your varnish when you mix it like two to one with water, that kind of thing? Or do you just eyeball it? I usually eyeball it because the, the ratios aren't, they usually don't have to be an exact science. Um, with this one, when I was doing the, the GAC 500 to the airbrush medium, um, I actually, because I knew it was a two to one ratio, uh, I poured in the GAC 500 and I marked it at the top and then I divided it in half, and then the same size of that is what I went above that, and then I just kind of filled up the line as a quick little, it's eyeballing, it's not exact or precise, because I know this bottle does kind of taper a little bit, so it might not be exactly a two to one ratio, but it was close enough to where I know if I fill it back up to that, it would still work just like it did with this. Um, but if you really want to, you can do um, like a volume measurement, uh, like a, with a cup holder so what if or a you cup have measurer. A mixed media piece with acrylic and pastel. Oil pastel or dry pastel. They did not specify. Because that's question. the question. Uh, dry pastel, you would need to spray varnish just because that dry pastel will pick back up. It's not officially sealed or cured on the, the whatever surface that you're using it on. Um, oil pastel is a unique beast. Um, and actually that's one thing I did want to show you guys. Um, this was another piece that I did on the show when I, we were doing oil pastels. This I actually just sprayed fixed with uh, the Sennelier oil pastel fixative. The reason why is because even though it's been a very, very long time, and they will kind of form a little bit of a shell on most oil pastels. Oil pastels are made with an oil that is not really a drying oil. It's, it's not really ever going to cure, ever. Um, they're gonna remain wet. But what I did is I actually had, um, I grabbed this last week and I ran my hand over it and I had pigment all over my hand. Um, so I sprayed fixed it with this and I was curious. Nothing's coming off now. Now it's not fully sealed in there, um, but it's it's uh, this is a combination of a resin with uh, alcohol. So the alcohol uh, is what disperses the resin out. Um, the resin will kind of form a little bit of a shell on there, and then the alcohol will evaporate. Uh, but it does give you some protection to where it's not going to smudge or smear. Uh, but if you really wanted to seal on top of that, I have seen a lot of forums where people start kind of getting into that. That would take a lot of experimentation and testing to see what works best for you. Um, I have never fully sealed in an oil pastel myself, other than the oil pastel spray fix, if that makes sense. But yeah, if it was acrylic and an, like a dry, pastel I would spray fix it um, enough to where I could either do a like an isolation coat with a spray or uh, do the um, like a, another final varnish on top of that wait this is the one that needs to be oh haha I was prepared I was like this is the one that needs to be diluted <laughs> This is, I've, I've used a lot of varnish, guys. Don't judge me. Um, it's hard to keep every, all the instructions right in my head. Uh, but this is the one that does need to be uh, watered down. So I got a jar of water with a little squeezy pipette. Because this is the easiest way to kind of uh, pour water in without making it, uh, like, just dumping it. Um, but I am going to eyeball this. So... Have we figured out which one we're going to do? YouTube wants the textured painting. Uh-huh. Facebook. Facebook, uh, the portrait's ahead by two. Okay. Somebody has a coin? Do we have a... 
Where, where are all the pennies? I know, it's usually pennies everywhere. <laughs> on, we one. usually have pennies everywhere because we use it to tighten screws and stuff around here. Um, okay. So we're going right, to have to decide this. I got a virtual coin. Okay, virtual coin. Uh, heads is the head. Head is a head. Flowers is tails. Okay, ready? Let's flip it. Heads. Heads. All right, guys. Um, I will, if you guys really want to see this uh, varnished, I will varnish it and post it on my uh, Instagram and Facebook live group page. So make sure you join. Uh, so my Instagram, if you guys are curious, is misscakes.art. It's where you will actually see my own personal art and all the things that I do for the show uh, behind the scenes, as well as the Facebook, uh, the Jerry's Live Facebook group. So if you want to see things like that, make sure you join the group. Uh, in order to get in, you do have to answer one question. So please answer that one question. Otherwise, you are deemed a robot. And Katie won't let me have robots in there. Nope. But one day, maybe. Um, if you're a robot, send me a, a personal message. We'll talk. But <laughs> can you still say no? Um, if you do want to join the, the Jerry's Live Facebook group, it is a huge community of artists that kind of just get together and we promote each other and our art um, as artists. Just like if you want to talk about the color composition or if you're having struggles or if you want to sh you know, show some inspiration or say, hey, what do you guys think about this? Um, it's a really nice way to um, kind of promote yourself and get familiar with the people that do the same things that you do. All right, so I just kind of eyeballed that, and I'm going to use the um, back side of this brush to mix it because I was not prepared for mixing. Whoops. If you had painted that on a gallery-wrapped canvas and mm -hmm. painted the sides, would you varnish the sides as well? Oh, that depends. Well, yeah. No, I would want to varnish the sides. Um, the reason why is because this is, again, my UV protecting. Uh, it's also a sealant uh, because I, I want to make sure I seal the surface really, really well. Uh, and the sides of your painting also will kind of be like a, a little bit of a an, an doorway into your acrylics. And you don't want to do that. You just want seal, just seal it. Seal it. Before you start doing that. Yes. You move those cans over so I can give them a good oh, yes. side let's, view so they can see. Let's make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Ooh, I'm going to break stuff while I'm shifting. Ooh, also, there's a lot of stuff on the table. I'm sorry. Do you want separate brushes for the isolation coat and the final varnish? Uh, that depends on what you're using. Is that good? Okay, cool. Um, so if your isolation coat is the isolation coat, you can use um, like a, a normal soft varnish brush. And then if your final varnish coat is Gamvar, I would keep them separate because this you need to clean up with a solvent, whereas the other one you need to clean up with just soap and water. If you are using the one that I'm using today, which is the uh, satin polymer varnish, um, this is also cleaned up with uh, soap and water, so I would use the same brush. I would make sure it's nice and dry in between, like your brush is dry between the coats. Um, I wouldn't use a wet brush just because you never know, like if there's a little bit of left, uh, like soap left over, if you didn't really like get it out of there really well. Um, oh, the other thing, dry time. Make sure your acrylics are at least a week dry. A week is a good kind of time frame. Same thing with the, um, the wow, watercolor words. Uh, the reason why is because any kind of moisture that is uh, trap that you trap in there has the ability to bloom and it will give you this like weird little hazy cloud and you don't want that. Um, so make sure that your acrylics are really, really dry before you even apply the isolation coat. I believe the isolation coat takes 24 to 48 hours to, yeah, I'm holding right, right jar, 24 hours to uh, cure before applying your final varnish. All the instructions for all of this is written on the jar. So always check the jar and the dry times and things like that. But for your, your artwork, make sure that it is at least a week so all that water can evaporate. So, all right, we have 
the wrong brush. So here's the deal. Whenever you are varnishing, use the right brush size for what you're varnishing. Um, I am not going to varnish this painting with this tiny little brush. That would just, it, you'd be sitting here forever. Um, there, it's use the appropriately sized tool for the, what, the job that you're doing. Um, so I just had the 1.5 inch uh, in my hand, and that's even too small. Um, this two inch is probably the smallest I would wanna go, but I think I'm gonna go with a three inch. The reason why is because I don't wanna be sitting here brushing for hours. I wanna make sure that I apply the varnish as quickly as possible with um, just a nice even coat. So. Uh, can we can we see the the panel just fine? All right, let me make sure I scooch this up. Okay, so I have my um, my satin varnish here with a it's the four to one ratio with the water, and I'm just going to dip just the edge of my brush in. I mean, it's starting to kind of soak up the brush. I don't need a whole lot, but I do need to make sure that I have. A good amount now when it comes to the edges I like to kind of like inch up to it just because I don't want a bunch dripping off the edge of my panel all right and I do tend to go kind of on the slower side but I can also see right here there's a fuzzy on my painting so anytime you see little fuzzies or if you have a hair that kind of comes off your brush because that does happen, it doesn't mean your brush is not great, it just it's the nature of a brush. Um, just make sure you pick them out before your varnish layer cures. Now I might also go this direction just to make sure I get all the edges. Did you prime that panel with anything specific, any gesso or gel before you painted on it? Uh, before I painted the acrylic on it? Yeah. No. I actually just went straight into the raw birch. Will that affect how you varnish it or what you would need to varnish it with? No. Uh, the reason why uh, that would not affect the varnish layer is because uh, the acrylics more or less seal the birch wherever I've applied the, the, the acrylic. But like say up here where there's still a little bit of the raw birch, uh, the isolation coat will seal that in. So it, it, it all gets sealed at the end. So I'm trying to make sure that I also stand, and you can kind of see me, um, I'm doing one of these. <laughs> the reason why is because I'm looking for that sheen um, and trying to make sure that my coats are nice and even and that nothing else is kind of getting stuck into my painting. So like if there's a fuzzy or something that I can see, I'll make sure to grab that. So I have um, the lights reflecting down into my piece and I will make sure that I can see any kind of imperfections on the surface. Now I am starting to get a little bit of um, excess on my brush so what I'll do is I'll just take it and kind of scrape off the edges onto that palette there. Um, but here, I wonder if I can do this. I do like to do this as well. Um, so I'll start up at the top just to kind of get any excess varnish off. And then I'll just kind of brush it all the way down. That way the puddle of extra varnish is usually on the bottom side because it gravity. Gravity is my friend on this, this occasion. Now you notice I'm always going this um, from left to right. The reason why is because um, I will let this cure and then I will come back and do a second uh, varnish layer and then I will go up and down that will minimize my brush strokes because they will be crisscrossed and then it will mostly hide any brush strokes that are still visible. Um, but the cool thing is that any brush strokes that are in there will for the most part kind of um, even out. Sorry, there's a bit of a puddle right here in the middle. I don't like it. 
There we go. All right, that's the varnish layer. Nice and easy peasy, right? So with the, um, the watercolor, I would do the same thing. Actually, you know what? How are we doing on time? Five minutes over, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do this guy real quick, just because I wanted you to see how well that isolation coat did. Um, so, with watercolors, if I hadn't done that isolation coat, that would have already gotten smeared. But the cool thing is now that it's um, gonna have that satin sheen to it, it might even look uh, similar to the, uh, the watercolor paper as it was before I sealed it with an isolation coat. Last question. Last um, question. Your textured painting there, how would you prevent puddling <laughs> when you seal it? Carefully. <laughs> um, actually, that was the fun thing, and I was not gonna lie, I'm kind of happy I'm not varnishing that on camera. Uh, it was such a pain to varnish all of that different textured areas um, with an isolation coat. So, with that, all of this, I used um, kind of a brush, I didn't use this particular one, but I used a brush probably about the same size, and I very, very carefully and very slowly um, did my isolation coat, and I kind of went with the grain of the painting. So uh, right here, I made sure that I like turned um, my brush sideways and kind of went in there, um, and if there was a big puddle, I scraped off the excess, went back in and kind of brushed it out as much as much as I could. Uh, there was still some bubbles that formed just because isolation coat, if you start, uh, it just kind of bubbles on you sometimes. Uh, for the most part, I popped the majority of them by literally blowing on it going, <laughs> I was a little lightheaded at the end, not because of a smell or anything, just because I was doing that so often. But uh, it's just, take it slow, take your time. If you notice a puddle, try to brush it out. Um, but sometimes puddles are gonna happen. It's not the end of the world if it's a little bit thicker in some areas. Uh, just try to catch them as much as you can. Uh, but this is now officially sealed uh, and I still have a lot of varnish, so I'll probably make sure to seal a couple other things while I'm here. Uh, but uh, that was varnishing, guys. I think, did we go over all the things? I hope we went over all the things, but uh, I'm going to end up letting these both cure for 24 hours and then coming back in and doing a uh, second coat the other direction uh, from the, the way that I was doing it before. Uh, and then I'll, I'll make sure to post a video of me varnishing the textured guy. And if I have any uh, weird things that happen whilst I do seal this, I will make sure to capture that and talk about it. And uh, any tips and tricks that, or questions you have on that, make sure you put them in the comments below. I might not be able to show you that all of the varnishing right now and today, uh, but you know, if you have questions, I will absolutely go back over all of them and make sure I can touch base with you guys. Uh, so that was varnishing uh, acrylics and other paintings, guys. Uh, again, if you want varnishing drawing materials, make sure you tell me, because I will add that to the class if you are interested. <laughs> I feel like you are, uh, but I'll, I'll make sure to check back. Um, and make sure to join us next week because I have a guest coming back on who you are very familiar with, Jeff Olson. Jeff Olson is coming back and he is bringing Cobra oil paints, which if you are not familiar, they are water soluble. So I know there's a lot of you out there that use water soluble oils and have a lot of questions about those. So make sure you join us next week because we're gonna be going over uh, the Cobra oils, mixing with a little bit of the Rembrandt traditional oils. So there's a lot of things that we're gonna cover and it's gonna be a really good show because Jeff, Jeff is always awesome and it's gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic. So uh, that was Varnishing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you uh, join me next week and I will see you then. Bye guys.